Grown Folks Production. It's going to be a fun night. We are talking touchdowns and turnovers. Touchdowns are the things that we really like about the beta, the things that we're really impressed with. And turnovers are going to be the things that we don't like. Of course, some of it is going to be that it's a beta and like there are glitches, the little things that need to be improved. But we're trying to give you the high level stuff, the stuff we know that's either going to be in the game or not in the game. When early like 5,000 foot view. What do you think about the beta? Uh, they, I, I'm going to say this, uh, they apparently listen. Uh, it's not, it's not where I want it to be, but compared to Madden's 20 and 21, it is light years ahead uh, if these features stick in. Plus, I want to see this week they're introducing the franchise kind of uh, playbook as far as how they're going to go through Madden 22. I want to see that too. But from what I've seen in the beta, gameplay-wise, I'm happy with it. It feels weird to say about Madden. And uh, franchise-wise, there are some things that I wish were changed. But for one cycle, what they are trying to do, I am pleasantly surprised and pleased. I have to admit, they did way more than what I expected them to do. This was way beyond my expectations. They've blown me away. Uh, by what they added. We're going to start with our turnovers. So the things that we didn't like. Here's, here's a touchdown for you on the surface. A plus one for me. I like the music. I know a lot of you are going to disagree with me, but like I love just having beats. Like no singing, nothing that like over. T I just love. Give me the beats. I don't know if you're sticking with that, EA. Please keep the beats. I love the beats. All right, here is my first turnover that's the vertical layout uh i like vertical like that's the old school right bring us back to vertical i'm totally okay with the vertical but it's just the way they've laid out everything i think they tried to fit 55 pounds of caca in a three pound bag and it's busted and it's just very hard to find substitutions and to find like the pre-snap stuff that you want to do whether it's like kill the clock or no huddle or whatever you're running right it's very hard to do those things and sometimes if you just make a couple wrong button pushes you, you don't even know what you've done you just like you know your guys are lining up and you're like okay here we go I, we're gonna find out what play i'm running when i get to the line so i would say my first one is it just needs to be um, streamlined it needs to be cleaned up a little bit and and just think if they made a few little tweaks maybe you know two months after having the game in our hand we've adjusted the first turnover i have is uh, something i encountered in my beta franchise i played around with i i played around with a franchise on madden 22 with them and uh the scenario engine uh, the new scenarios make me nervous from a and i'm thinking as a user who is typically in the four to five win category bobby wagner came out in a scenario engine with a surprise retirement potential yeah he's he not was happy about retire on me yeah well i was uh, here's the thing i was one and one at the time i was two <laughs> games into the season he's got a quick trigger man yeah apparently well my team then went and i was simulating i wasn't playing games i would just simulate just to get to the end of the season to see what it looked like i i managed to get him to not quit which was good but his ratings took a severe beating i think he was a 99 overall in the game and i think he he dropped to like a 90 and slowly got back up. But from from a standpoint of a four to five win user, um, if your best player, like a player you're gearing around, suddenly says, oh, by the way, I'm quitting and it's out of your hands, that to me as a four to five win user would, pardon the language, piss me off. <laughs> so that's one thing. I hope they tweak that a little bit, maybe – Maybe make it to where he doesn't retire per se, but maybe he just has that ratings hit to the end of the season and maybe you got to talk him into staying. That would be kind of cool. But to have him retire mid-season with no warning and you have no replacement, you have no plan, I understand that can happen in the real world, but in a video game where you might be in the bottom tier, it's like, I just lost my best player and I stink. Oh my gosh, why am I here? So I think this next one, we may actually disagree on, so it'll make for a fun conversation. Uh, I don't like the new menu. I think it is created mm -hmm. to feel new, and a lot of it isn't new. A lot of it is easier maybe to find, but it feels cluttered. It feels like the top menu at the very top where you could normally see owners, like that is now removed. And so as a commissioner, it's like, I got to go, you know, looking for it in like several sub menus instead of just having a column that listed every owner, which was, you know, set auto uh, autopilots and to do invites, you know, that kind of stuff. 
And so I don't hate it, but I just feel like it's going to take some adjustment because when you first look, it can be a little overwhelming. It does start to feel a little cluttered. Now, I will say it's easier to find like quick information about your team and the team you're playing, which I like, but it just mm -hmm. feels like, boy, it can be overwhelming to the senses when you first log in and look. And so you couple that with vertical menus that already feel cluttered and stuff is hidden and it's hard to find. You're gonna find some of that in this menu. Again, maybe a month into the game, I'm totally used to it and I, I'm, I like it. Because uh, I don't yeah. hate it, but it does feel close. Next turnover. Um, this is something that really shouldn't. Most people turn it off anyway. I like to. I like to at least listen for a little while. But the presentation, as far as mm. the voiceover work, is seems relatively unchanged. I don't know if that's something they're going to add like the last month or two before you know between beta and and launch. And there's a little bit of presentation elements that are added that I do like, but for the most part, the presentation just being completely unchanged. And I'm talking, I'm talking voiceover work and and like uh, the the talking that goes above. You know, God and and Davis are very, very, very stable. And this is yeah. coming from someone who skipped a year, so it's like I, don't, I can't imagine <laughs> you guys that went through 21 and they're like, "Hey, we yeah. heard him for an extra." Once year. you kick off, everything is back to old school, boring, played yeah. out. They what what would really be ideal is, and I, EA is going to claim it costs too much. That's what they did with the super fans deal. If you didn't read that article, that was funny. Oh, yeah. The uh, they the the 2K series NBA 2K does a lot of different announcement groups. They have like different announcing teams. You know, they have. I'm trying to remember the Kevin Harlan. They've got Chris Weber. They've got. Yeah. Uh, they've got. Uh, they've got all kinds of NBA guys, and they they mix and match them. And it sounds it sounds realistic, and it's different from game to game, even. So you have different broadcasters, you know, for different games. And even if it is the same play by play guy, if it's different color guys that can interject their own lines, it feels fresh yeah. and different. It feels like a different game. God and Davis just don't do it for me anymore. They're perfectly fine, but it's just we need we need different announcing teams. We need we need like where's where's my CBS crew? Where's my ABC crew? NFL's yeah. a big multi channel uh brand. Why are those guys not in there? So that that's why I, when I say presentation unchanged mostly, that's what I'm talking my about. My last turnover, and I think guys are going to start picking up on a, a theme that I have here. It is going to be the coaching treat. Now, I will say, I haven't been a big fan of coaches since people introduced it. And once it got here, it blew me away. And I'm very intrigued by it. Now, we'll see if it gets old. We'll see if it gets abused or repetitive. But on the surface, I'm very intrigued. But it's very RPG, right? Which I used to hate RPGs until this dude that I'm with right now got me into <laughs> them. When got me into RPGs. Uh, I think it was Zelda was the first RPG I totally got into. My one complaint, and I wish I, I could show, I wish we could show, you know, even though Eric got away with showing some uh, things on his stuff, let me see if I can pull it up and explain. Here we go, manage staff, um, franchise staff, here we go. So. It's it, my complaint is it's not easy to figure out like there's not unless I skipped it and don't remember it's not a great guided tour of like here's what this screen is and here's what the view talent tree means and here's where you spend your points and what it does it's like you gotta kind of figure it out yourself and I just feel like it's it's um, the UI is not very user friendly like it's not a quick plug and play you gotta like mess with it a bit before you kind of figure it out and that's my complaint overall i like what they've done i like where they're going with it i like the concept i like the idea of the tree i like that it's not easy everything's about 10 points unless they're all 10 points i i didn't even look way down they are look here. they're all 10 yeah points. they're all even the ones at the at the bottom even though i think yes. some of the ones at the bottom maybe just a little bit more but anyway it's not easy to get 10 points i just think it could have been done a little bit simpler and overall i like the concept i just don't think it's super user friendly give me your uh, last turnover well before i give you my last turnover i want to i want to piggyback on on your coaching thing i i it's not a touchdown of mine but i do i know you you say you like it the things i want to say about it is the number one you got to consider the fact that this is the beta and you know, mm -hmm. you remember if you have like your tutorial menus on, if you go to like scouting, that's been the same for like a decade, you still got that same stupid scouting tutorial. 
where it makes you go through and scout. I'd be willing to bet they're going to add some type of tutorial for this. It's just not in the beta. So I do think they will walk people through this with some kind of tutorial. Now, it might just be God and like, you know, popping screens over and say, this is where you train your head coach. This is where you train your coordinators. Mm -hmm. This is where you train your GM. Totally. You totally can be right. It'll be simple. I think think they'll walk that through. Um, And I I don't think that'll be a problem for new users to it. And that's the other thing I was going to say is that those ultimate abilities, what I call ultimate abilities, the ones that are at the very bottom of the tree, those are ones you can actually reuse because the ultimate ability for the general manager is for 10 points, he can unlock somebody who is not, like not interested. He can make them interested again to try and sign. Nice. So you can actually, yeah. Uh, the bottom of the head coach, you have two options, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, one of them is you can basically unlock the development of a player instantly. So like if it's hidden, you can mm. unlock that immediately. Or the other side of it is if you pay the points, you can prevent regression to a position group. Yeah, I see for that. For one season. So essentially, it basically, and it's position group, not person. So you can go quarterbacks, wide receivers, tight ends, and it prevents that entire group from regressing uh, for one season. So that's really handy, and it's reviable. So it's something that once you buy, you can buy it a second time and a third time. And another thing that the uh, general manager, the player personnel guy can do is at the very top of his chain, he's got the ability to do hometown discount to let mm-hmm. you know rank three, the top end of that. It gives you a 20% discount to contract offers for anyone that's naughty or lower overall on your team. Yeah, so that great. is huge for re-signs so if you've got a lot of veterans you want to bring back for one more run or you know, however. But uh, I, I, do, I do like it. It's not a touchdown of mine, but I did want to touch on that before I go to my third turnover, uh, which is not... It's not really about the game, honestly. It's not really about anything in the game, which is really? what makes me sad about it. Yeah. Um, why did it take such a fuss about Madden 21 to get to this point? Why did it take us having to go to social Fair. media, throw a fit, fit, I mean, honestly, a rightful fit, but a fit about how bad this franchise mode, franchise mode was untouched for years before Madden finally said, oh, maybe we should do something. For those guys why that's my complaint and you see what they've done in a year they've done not as much as i would like but i'm willing to say hey they've done work for me they've done work for me and then the other thing i would say about that is i know they're at least trying to pretend they're caring because they're actually throwing us first up like on these deep dives they're doing for madden we're not at the bottom that's where we've been in these announcements the last couple of years and now we're top of the line Nope. I want to see this every year for a couple of years. But why did it take us throwing a fit? Why did it take us having to go fix Madden franchise for this to happen? That's my biggest turnover is why did it take us being so mad at the game that we review bombed it to give it a 0.2 user score for you to finally listen to us? That's the aggravating. That's the thing that the, the biggest turnover is. You dropped the ball so bad on franchise for years that it took us saying, hey, you dropped the ball pick it up for you to finally say oh yeah i should do something with that that that's yep. my biggest that's my third turnover it's not even about the game it's just about why did it take us throwing this fit for you to do this much work and you're and you've done a lot and we we want to give you credit for it but why did it take us throwing a fit for you to do this let's get to some touchdowns my first touchdown is the depthness of pre-game pre-week stuff to do Literally, mm-hmm. you could sit. I'm I'm probably over exaggerating. You can jump in with your 36 ACT scores and 4.8 that you had after you graduate and fix the dummy here. I feel like you could spend two, three hours before you even play the game, like messing with your coaching tree, looking at who you're about to play looking at their stat like if the stats are right now that's the one thing that's up in the air but like they show you your overall rankings right on the main screen one push Mm -hmm. of a button you see the overall rankings of both teams compared to each other who's high who's low who's kind of close you get to see offensive rankings defensive rankings you get to see their top players with just a couple of pushes of the button you can see what they do on first down what they do on second down what they do on third down you can start to get an idea of zone man inside like 
all of these things that we've been asking for, you can literally scout, deep scout a team without watching you know, 50 hours of film on If that's all we get, I'm totally happy. I really am. Like that is a big, big step forward. Including, oh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I almost forgot about that. You <laughs> could, like when you go to do your weekly practice, you can pick your strategy and then you get to pick, are we going all out full, th full pads? Are we going shells? Mm -hmm. Are my starters getting all the reps? Are we doing starter backup? Are we doing backups? Like, and then your players get hurt in practice. That is something to get super and, excited about. So and the fatigue touchdown. system as a whole, like the buildup of fatigue over a season. That's super yeah. realistic. Yeah, I do. I do like that. I like I, I, just about everything you're spitting. I'm, I enjoyed about, about franchise so far. Nope, that was my first touchdown. Give me your first touchdown. Uh, my first touchdown is uh, is going to be one that you kind of poo pooed on, which is okay. That's okay. We can have different opinions, right? We less is more can. is what I called it. Um, less is more. Um, no longer, at least at this point, no longer do you have the coach just wandering around in the background, sitting in his chair, picking his nose, looking at the looking at a picture, looking at his phone or a tablet, just clipping through his hand. No longer is any of that there. Take that crap away. We didn't need it. I'm um, snapping. I love me, that. Give me a nice streamlined menu. This menu feels a lot to me uh, like the NHL menus from Franchise Mode. And I really, really like that feel. And I understand where you're coming from, where it looks kind of busy. But the thing I like about the NHL series is that all your information's in blocks and windows and widgets. And you go to that widget and you pull up all the information you want. So you go to your stats, you pull up all your stats. You go to your you go to your your team stuff, you pull up all your team stuff. So I I am a little more comfortable with the menu than you are at this point. So I definitely like it. And I also noted under that less is more. My favorite thing about the whole uh, practices deal is that I don't have to sit there and and basically spam this computer to try and get a gold. Uh, mm -hmm. gold medallion so i get the most experience yes i don't have to do any of that it's 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 less interactive but it's more entertaining and more engaging because it's less interactive sometimes less is more and i would like that so that's my first touchdown is less is more. my second touchdown right is that where we are we're in number two yeah my yeah, second we're touchdown two. no one has confirmed this so maybe it's just my old 41 year old eyes playing tricks on me <laughs> but i feel like the player models have been tweaked and are, are slightly what's the word i'm looking for um i don't i don't it, it, they're, uh, like they're more this polished. isn't a great word yeah poly, i was gonna say cartoonish like just a little to where it like I would, okay, remember when Madden took that big, big leap in graphics from, I think it was like 99 or 2000 to 2001 or 2002? PS1 like, to PS3. Yeah, it was like that massive yeah. jump where, mm -hmm. you know, we went from like the 16 bit to like a new world. Like, that's what this feels like. It's like, it's just a, that next little jump. Maybe it's because on, on the new system, all that stuff. Maybe it's that little jump of, um, Trey, please give us your pros and cons. We'll talk about them, buddy. Um, but I, I think that those player models have been tweaked just enough to where I notice a difference and it looks better to me and it feels better. I haven't noticed much graphical difference from year to year in, in quite some yeah. time. They also tweaked the movement just a little bit though, just enough to where it doesn't feel as sluggish as 21 on PS5. Uh, it mm -hmm. still has the more realistic movement, no more, the, you know, the cuts of left to right with, you know, on a dime, like, you know, no human that can be without blowing out both ACLs. Uh, it ain't <laughs> happening, when, like Wynn said. It feels realistic, but it's got a little bit more speed. And I think once we start messing with sliders, we can give even more speed. So those are my yeah. two. Well, it's my one touchdown, but the slight improvements in movement and player models, I think really, really, really good. Give me your second touchdown. This is one I came across when I finished the first year of my franchise, and it surprised me pleasantly. Um, I, my second point is history is important. Um, basically, when I got done with my season, my first season with the Seattle franchise I did on my own, just simulating, uh, it came to the 2021 season recap. It recapped all the way back to 1967. I could look at every Super Bowl from Super Bowl That's 1. That's kind of cool. 
to Super Bowl whatever we're on now, 54, 55. And in most cases, I could see the the winner, the obviously the the second place. I could see the coach of the year, and I could see the Super Bowl MVP. That to me is awesome. Now they couldn't list everything, and I think it's probably because of because of restrictions due to you know licensing and you know having to pay people for their names and likenesses and stuff. But to have that as like you can go all the way back to Super Bowl one and see the entirety of the NFL from 67 to where you take over in this case in 19 in 2021 is is awesome to me. I love that. But uh, that that was something I, I thought was a nice touch that I wasn't expecting. And because I wasn't expecting it, I was pleasantly surprised. So I want to put that in as a touchdown. Kudos to EA for throwing that in. Please leave that in because that is really, really cool. Um, my last touchdown, and I could have had a bunch of these. Wynn and I tried to like share so we didn't say the same ones over and over. But um, that's the stats. So right now, I'm in the weekly strategy plan and uh, literally like i'm just gonna see if i can quickly read some of this so giants offense average points per game and where they rank total yards where they rank average passing yards where they rank average rushing yards where they rank turnovers where they rank now those numbers aren't there's something screwy here like it's showing they have 254 turnovers which and could be beta. fourth in the league right totally um, offensive play calling tendencies, 58% pass, 42% run, 0% play action. And you get hit triangle and there's a full report that shows first and yep. long, second and long, third and long. Oh my God. Like, yes, 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 yes. Give me all of these. Um, <laughs> player health. You can, you can manage your defensive players, player health. So Jonathan Joseph is fatigued. Patrick Robinson's fatigued. Uh, uh, Malcolm Jenkins is fatigued. So I can go in here, press a button, and I can pick my practice intensity. Do I want to go full pads, half pads? Do I want to come you know, position by position, starters, split, or backups? Like who's getting the playing time here? So that's say safety, Malcolm Jenkins, he needs a, a, a break. So I'm going to um, you know, do all backups there, right? Like so much here that you can do. And that's just one side. On the other side, Saquon Barkley is their top threat. He goes, defend this uh, defensive game plan would be to defend the outside run. And it shows why. He's had 46 rushing attempts, which is number 12 in the league. He's 284 rushing yards, number three in the league. Rushing yards per carry, where he ranks in the league. Touchdowns, where he ranks in the league. Fumbles, where he ranks in the league. So it showed you, if you pick this game plan, you're going to get better outside run block uh, shed, uh, better tackling, better pursuit, better play recognition when calling outside run play counters. And it shows you everything. So you can click that and it brings up all the things. So you can defend deep pass, inside run, medium pass, outside run, QB scramble, defend sharp, and what each of those not only help your defense increase, it shows their stats for each of those. It's just literally, if you wanted to just sit here, you could spend hours just messing with your your team, figuring out exactly how you want to attack the team that you're about to play. You can really, really dive deep into these, and and that's something that it's really, it's good, man. It's really good. I, I do um, like so. I do like that. Depending on your your choice of you know practice, you know you practice your uh, your game plan, you get temporary bonuses to your players at different attributes. I really dig that because then that really does feel dynamic because from week to week, you might have better zone coverage guys. You might have better man coverage guys. You might have better play recognition as a whole, better tackling, better pursuit. All that stuff works together to make the players feel a lot more dynamic they are. So now the ratings still matter, but now they matter a little bit less because now you're able to modify them on a week-to-week -week basis with small little things like game plans and stuff. I really do dig that. My final touchdown is another one that you turned over. Uh, and that's the play calling screen. I, the reason I like the play calling screen is it is different, Which and there are some places where I got to learn where stuff is, like substitutions and things like that. And the, I think it's one of those things that after a month, you will get used to. The, the yeah. thing I love the most about it, though, is that every formation you pick, it actually shows all your sub formations across the top. So
so like if you're a shotgun heavy team and you have like 12 or 13 formations in shotgun instead of going okay which ones do i have and having to go through each one and look at the picture play art and see okay that's what it is it actually shows you across the top okay i've got wide trips i've got wide trip spread i've got spread i've got you know five wide receiver iso you know it shows all that at the top so i don't have to guess what's in my playbook i can see it across the top that's huge for as you learn your playbook, you can quickly navigate between those different formations. Go to your plays that you, you know, want to call on those third downs, those second downs, those first downs, and you can get to them that much quicker once you get used to the interface. I will emphasize that it will take some getting used to, but I like the fact that it shows a lot of this information to you easily readable so that way you can digest it and basically th go through it that much quicker and not have to guess what's in your playbook and flip through and look at the pictures and go okay that's that formation okay that's and by the time you get done with that you call on timeout because your play clock ran out because you don't know your playbook that well early on it's it's just it's a little thing but it is something i like and i think it will be something you get used to um but i do understand where your frustrations are finding different things but that was my big thing is just being able to see all your formations across the top. So if you run a lot of eye formation or a lot of strong eye or weak eye formations, you can see them all across the top and you don't have to guess what's in your playbook. Yeah.